Welcome to Shipwreck Sunday, where we investigate disasters at sea and the impact that they have on the world today. My name is Eleanor. Today we will be discussing the sinking of MS Herald of Free Enterprise. Before we dive in, I must inform you. This story does include details of a maritime disaster resulting in the sinking of a vessel, negligence, and death that may be disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Please note before we begin that I am not a mariner or expert in the field of maritime history, but I have done my research and will present the information as I understand it and with accurate nautical terminology. For today's episode and moving forward in future episodes, if you are unfamiliar with basic nautical terms, there will be a brief note for you in the episode description. Our story begins in the late 1970s in Bremerhaven, Germany, in the Schau und Wesser shipyard. The subsidiary of European ferries, Townsend Torsen, ordered three ships to be built for their Dover Calais route, with these ships set to be completed and delivered to the company in 1980. The class would be branded the Spirit class and were as follows. Spirit of Free Enterprise, Herald of Free Enterprise, and Pride of Free Enterprise. If you're sensing a theme here, so am I. The common theme of free enterprise originated from the Townsend Car Ferries private sector roll-on, roll-off, or row-row ferries introduced in 1962. Herald of Free Enterprise, the middle child in the spirit class and the subject of today's video, was launched on December 21, 1979 and began her service on May 29, 1980. MS Herald of Free Enterprise was what is known as a roll-on, roll-off car ferry, which means that the bow has a visor that opens and allows cars to be rolled on and off the cargo deck easily, making traveling over a waterway with your car incredibly easy and convenient. We have covered a different Roro ferry already in MV Estonia, and Herald of Free Enterprise had a similar purpose. She was 432 feet long, had a 76-foot beam and an 18-foot draft. She is propelled by three 6,000-kilowatt, 12-cylinder Sulzer medium-speed diesel engines that drove variable-pitch propellers and averaged 22 knots for her service speed. The ship was large, with a capacity of 1,400 passengers, weighing in at 7,951 gross registered tons and was comprised of eight decks. The eight decks were a deck, this deck housed crew accommodations and the radio room. Half deck, this deck was located between A and B and contained the bridge. B deck, this deck contained passenger areas, crew accommodations, and the galley. C deck, on this deck there were more passenger accommodations and another galley. D deck, this deck was a suspended vehicle deck contained within E deck and was capable of having vehicles loaded onto it through a weather tight door at the bow and an open portal at the stern. E deck, this was the upper vehicle deck and was also capable of having vehicles loaded onto it through the same weather tight door at the bow and the open portal at the stern and could be loaded at the same time as G deck. G deck, this deck was the main vehicle deck, and cars would be loaded onto it through watertight doors at the bow and stern. These bow doors were constructed by Cargo Speed in Glasgow, Scotland. H deck. And lastly, H deck was reserved for the engine rooms, stores, and passenger accommodations at the bow. For comparison's sake, MS Herald of Free Enterprise was roughly half the size of RMS Titanic. This ferry was also equipped with more than enough lifeboats for a full ship, which was great news for anyone traveling by her. Although there isn't a vast amount of information regarding MS Herald of Free Enterprise's career before the accident, there is some eyebrow-raising behaviors from her crew and other crews on the other two Spirit-class ships that is worth mentioning. In October of 1983, the Herald's sister ship, Pride of Free Enterprise, found herself in trouble when she sailed from Dover to Zeebrugge with her bow and stern doors open due to her assistant bosun falling asleep and failing to close the doors. Fortunately, nothing happened to the Pride, except for her crew making fools of themselves. You might be asking yourself, what is a bosun? A bosun, or boatswain as they were formerly called, is essentially the head of the deck department and supervises the deck crew of the vessel, and the assistant bosun is like his assistant manager. 
as a result of this incompetence displayed by the assistant bosun on the pride of the free enterprise, a July 1984 general instruction was issued stating that it was the duty of the officer loading the main vehicle decks to ensure they are closed before leaving port. Unfortunately, this instruction was regularly ignored and was generally interpreted lazily as just needed to ensure someone was standing next to the controls and ready to close the doors, not necessarily that they were closed before leaving. As we all know, it is usually human error that causes most shipwrecks. The order of harbor stations was frequently given as a signal to close the doors and ready the ship to leave harbor. And in this situation with the Pride, the assistant bosun had fallen asleep and had not heard the harbor station's order being given. The order was generally given as soon as the loading officer in charge decided that by the time the crew arrived at their stations that they would be ready for the ship to head out to sea. The assumptions and reckless disregard for procedure would inevitably spell disaster for MS Herald of Free Enterprise. Before we totally unpack this sinking, I just have to be transparent. On the day the ferry capsized, she wasn't running her typical route. She was running the Dover, England to Zeebrugge, Belgium route, and it wasn't meant for her and her running mates. Why not, you might ask? This is because the link span, or the drawbridge used for moving vehicles on and off railroad ferries at Zeebrugge, had not been designed to accommodate the unique loading design of Spirit Class ferries. It used a single deck that wasn't high enough to reach E deck that prevented the simultaneous loading on decks E and G that was so appealing about the Spirit Class. In order to compensate, the vessel's ballast tanks in the bow were filled with seawater to weigh the nose of the ship down just a tad. The ballast tanks were never emptied before leaving port and therefore her natural trim or the angle the ship sits in the water was never righted. It is stated that if the Herald had survived her accident, she would have been modified to have not needed this procedure. The bosun was expected to close the doors before the moorings or ropes that anchor a ship to the dock were dropped. Unfortunately for the Herald, her assistant bosun, Mark Stanley, had retired to his cabin for a short break after having cleaned the car deck upon his arrival. I was in the depths of a nap when the harbor station's call sounded and the ship dropped her moorings, preparing to set off. This shouldn't have been too much of a problem, since First Officer Leslie Sable was tasked with staying on deck to ensure the doors to the Dakar decks were closed, but Sable made a critical mistake. He would later claim to seeing Mark Stanley approaching, but the court in charge of the inquiry found his evidence inaccurate. Sable, assuming Stanley would be there shortly and feeling immense pressures to get to the bridge, left G-deck with the bow doors still open. There was another person present on G-Deck and actually believed to be the last person on that deck, Bosun Terence Eiling. Later, when he was asked why he didn't close the doors, he stated simply that it wasn't his job to do. Despite this negligence, he played a key role in the rescue. Captain David Lurie had assumed the doors were closed since it was impossible to see them from the bridge thanks to the ship's design and there wasn't a sensor for the doors, so he assumed his crew had done their jobs properly. As we are about to see, this would have deadly consequences. On March 6, 1987, at 5.05 p.m., MS Herald of Free Enterprise left her berth in Seabrook with a crew of 80 people and 459 passengers aboard. In the car deck, there are 81 cars, 3 buses, and 47 trucks. Within 90 seconds of leaving the harbor and after hitting 18.9 knots, water rushed into the cargo deck by the ton. Due to the free service effect, she became increasingly unstable. At 5.24 p.m., she had passed the outer mole, a mole being a sort of dam made of stacked stones that is used to separate bodies of water. By 5.28 p.m., she began to list 30 degrees to port, riding herself for a moment. In this moment, everyone aboard thought that that was the end of it. The ship was righted, and they'd finish their journey without incident. Unfortunately, before that thought could even cross half the passengers' minds, the ship listed sharply to port once more before completely capsizing. All of this happened within 90 seconds. All of the water rushing in destroyed all electrical systems on the ship, plunging the ship into terrifying darkness. Luckily for everyone aboard, the ship was in relatively shallow water that was only half a mile deep and ended up half submerged on her port side. Meanwhile, nearby on a dredger, the crew noticed the Herald's lights had gone dark and they immediately reported it to the port authorities, as well as the fact they believed the bow doors to be wide open. At 5.37 p.m., the alarm was raised and rescue helicopters were dispatched, followed by the Belgian Navy who were undertaking a naval exercise nearby. 
A German ferry that happened to be in the same harbor, captained by Wolfgang Schroeder, immediately dove in to start the rescue effort and was commended by Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and received a medal from King Baudouin of Belgium for his efforts. The capsizing resulted in the deaths of 193 of the 539 passengers and crew aboard. Most of the victims of the disaster were trapped inside the ship in its sudden capsizing and froze to death due to the frigid temperatures of the water. Due to the admirable efforts of divers from both the Belgian Navy and the Royal Navy, the death toll was significantly lower than it could have been. During this rescue, the tide began to rise and it became too dangerous to continue until the following morning. By then, it was too late for everyone who had been on the ship overnight and they died due to hypothermia. In the following days, divers would recover any bodies that were able to be recovered. This isn't where our story ends, however. After the incident, there was a public court of inquiry held under Mr. Justice Sheen in 1987. In this investigation, the cause of the sinking was attributed to three key mistakes. Number one, Mark Stanley's failure to close the bow doors as he was in his cabin. Number two, Leslie Sable's failure to ensure the doors were closed. And three, Captain David Lurie not noticing the doors being opened before leaving port. Although Mark Stanley was primarily to blame for not closing the doors, it was critical of Leslie Sable since he had not actively closed the doors himself and allowed the disaster to happen. Sheen also found Townsend Torreson to be riddled with what he called a disease of sloppiness and a lack of communication that went from the top down in the company, and that this sloppiness resulted in carelessness that directly caused the capsizing. In the immediate aftermath, a salvage operation was launched to remove the large ship from the harbor as it rested on a sandbar. The salvage was successfully completed in April of 1987, the Broken Herald of Free Enterprise being towed to the Netherlands, where she was sold to Compania Naviera S.A. for scrapping. As a final slap to her face by her owners, she was renamed Flushing Range and had her Townsend Torreson logo painted over on her side before making her final difficult journey to Taiwan where she was scrapped on March 22, 1988. She left for her voyage on October 5, 1987 with the MV Gaelic in attendance and being towed by a Dutch tug called Markestrom. The ships had to pause their journey first off Cape Finisterre where they ran into the Great Storm of 1987, an exceedingly violent extratropical cyclone that occurred on the night between October 15th and 16th. They resumed on October 19th until they ran into another problem. Around the coast of South Africa, the hull began to disintegrate on December 27, 1987 and had to be towed to Port Elizabeth on January 2, 1988 for minor repairs to allow her to make it to Taiwan, and she finally did on March 22, 1988. The Herald of Free Enterprise capsizing was disastrous, being the worst death toll in a peacetime maritime disaster involving a British ship since the sinking of HMY Iolaire on January 1, 1919, where 205 of the 280 on board perished. Since the capsizing, there have been engineering changes to the design of Roro cargo ships, including indicators on the bridge that alert the crew to open bow doors, watertight ramps being fitted to the bow section, and freeing flaps that would allow excess seawater to escape the cargo deck in the event of any flooding. The International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea regulations were amended in 1990 to require 49 inches of freeboard for all new row rows, increasing from the previous requirement of 30 inches. There are also regulations now prohibiting an entirely open deck plan on row rows, requiring watertight compartments that can be sealed. After the capsizing of the MS Herald of Free Enterprise, safety regulations have vastly improved, although it is unfortunate it took a disaster like this to change these regulations for the better. This episode hopes to honor and commemorate the memories of those lost in the capsizing of MS Herald of Free Enterprise. If you would like to assist others who have found themselves in a similar situation, Australian businessman Maurice de Rohan founded Disaster Action, a charity that works with victims of similar disasters. He did this in honor of his daughter and son-in-law who passed away on the Herald. To donate to Disaster Action, visit disasteraction.org.uk. Thank you for tuning in to Shipwreck Sunday. If you liked this episode and are listening on YouTube, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you liked this episode and are listening on Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, or another podcast service, please subscribe for more content and leave us a five-star review as it does help us reach more listeners like you. Tune in next Sunday for the story of P.S. General Slocum, 
a paddle wheel steamer that sank in 1904 and was originally the worst disaster for New York City before the September 11th attacks in 2001. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.